I'm going to talk about the EMI AMGA methylated catalog product, which is currently one of the most popular and widely used, used methylated catalog service adopted in grid communities. Okay, uh, this is a, a line of my talk today. I'm going to start with a little bit of background and motivation of AMGA, and then talk about architectural and implementation details of AMGA and then move to move on to discuss some situations, some cases, why and how to replicate and distribute distribute method catalog itself using AMGA. And then cover some AMGA use cases in scientific applications and conclude my talk with some ongoing work and future plans on the development and maintenance of AMGA in KISTI. Okay, let me start with my, uh, why method is needed on the grid. Like we observe in LHC experiment, so WLCG is the world's largest production grid infrastructure ever built, consisting of hundreds of thousands of CPUs in more than 150 competing centers in about 40 countries. With about 25 uh, petabytes of data annually, uh, generated from large hadron collider to be stored and distributed in the form of millions of files across across the globe. With this kind of large scale data grid environment, catalogs are catalogs are essentials to populate, discover and locate data, for example, millions of files among among the numerous sites. There are two kinds of pet catalogs that comes around today. File catalog map, logical file names to physical locations, and LFC, as you know, is the most popular file catalog service in the grid. On the other hand, metadata catalog is used to describe the contents of files to help search for files based on their description. AMGA is one of the most popular when widely used metadata catalog services in the grid communities. So AMGA was originally designed to provide access to metadata for files stored on the grid and also a simplifi simplified general access to relational data stored in database systems. The ALDA project in 2004 evaluated existing metadata services at that time from have, have experiments such as AMI from Atlas. REFDB from CMS and Alien Metalite Catalog from Alice. It turned out that those ex existing Metalite Catalog systems had similar goals and concepts, each designed for a particular application domain. So the use of those existing Metalite Catalogs outside of, outside of the intended domain was really, really difficult. So that ALDA proposed a generic interface for metadata access on the grid, which is not bound to a particular application domain. The design and implementation of ANGA was done in close collaboration with diverse EGE at the time user communities to ensure that all functionality, performance, and security requirements were properly addressed. Particularly, ANGA targets the needs of the high energy physics community to address scalability and performance issues, and also the need for security aspect of the biomedical community. AMGA, therefore, was designed to integrate fine grained access control, control, making use of a virtual organization management system called BAMS. AMGA, AMGA as part of EMI pro product, is available for download with the latest AMGA 2.4 version from the EMI repository. Okay, let's move on to some basic concepts behind the AMGA method catalog. Here are typical user requirements for method catalog services on the grid. I want to store some information about files in a structured way and then later make some queries on those information. I also want to have a simplified DB for keeping information about jobs running on the grid. 
where I want where I want my job to have direct access to metadata services using my GRIP plus certificate. And also I want my job to have read and write access to job status information. For this and the direct use of data database system is not viable solution on the grid because as you might know, traditional DB is not considered grid enabled in terms of there's no support for grid aware authentication and authorization. With AMGA, metadata is defined in terms of schema attributes and entries. Entries are the most basic elements managed by the catalog representing the real world entities described in the catalog. Attributes are key value pairs with type information. Schemas are a set of attributes and collections are a set of entries associated with the schema. The AMGA implementation allows the collection to be organized hierarchically like directories in a file system with entries playing the role of files. The interface defines a square like AMGA net query that the AMGA translates to the, translate to the respective square on the back end database. The AMGA latest version can even support the native SQL queries as well. Okay, for the better understanding of AMGA metadata concept mentioned in the previous slide, the AMGA analysis to RDMS might be helpful. So the attributes in AMGA, which is a key value pair with type information, correspond to the schema schema column in RDBMS. The schema, which is a, a set of attributes, corresponds to the table schema in RDBMS. The entry corresponds to the table row in RDBMS, and the collection, which is a set of, a, set of entries associated with the schema, corresponds to the DB table in RDBMS. Also, the AMGA Analyze to file system is also shown in this slide. Collections are like directories in file system. And entries are like files in the directory in file system. Attributes are like file attributes in file system. As I mentioned, the AMGA service allows metadata to be structured as a hierarchy of logical collections so that related metadata can be grouped together and isolated from other metadata. On the right hand side of this slide, you could see three collections called hospital, patients, patients and doctors defined in defined hierarchy in AMGA. With patient collection populated with two entries with attributes like name, illness, and age. You could see the corresponding patient DB table with three columns on the on the left hand side slide on the with three columns defined and two rows instantiated on the left hand on the left hand and uh, slide. Okay, let me move on to explain some AMGA features. So AMGA implemented as a multi process C plus server sitting between AMGA clients and a relational database backend. The AMGA clients could be either applications or end users. The ND server plays a role of security gatekeeper to check whether to accept the requests from clients, for example, by virtually authenticating with the clients, and then map the client ID into AMGA local user ID for further authorization process. As the front end of the backend DB, the MD server receives AMGA net queries from the AMGA clients and translates them into the respective DB square dialect that the backend DB understands. AMGA currently supports multiple database backend systems, including Oracle, Postgre, and MySQL. It offers two access protocols for clients. Web service and PHP streaming. For 
high performance aspect of AMBA, the TCP streaming interface supports features like skinned bulk operations, which allows users to change several entries in a single transaction. In fact, AMGA not only supports plain transactions, but also bulk insert operations. The WS trial interface of AMGA addresses inter interoperability issues. The WS trial, as you know, is an OGF standard for, for access to relational database. The implication of this is that UR allows to have access to different databases with the standard protocol using AMGA. AMGA provides very flexible authentication and authorization mechanisms based on, based on ID password, X509 pre certificates, and BAMS enabled certificates. Connections can be encrypted via, via a uh, secure socket layer, but this can be switched up for purpose reasons. Access control is supported in the form of unit like access control permission, either on a per collection or per entry basis. The support is for collection and per collection basis, where all the entries in a collection share the same access permission. For entry, access control is also supported at the cost of some performance degradations. Now, you might come up with some questions as to why you need a fine-grained access control like the per, like the per entry access control in AMGA. The reason is that for some biomedical patients, the medical data data itself may be very sensitive since it often contains sensitive patient information such as patient names and age. This support for, for entry access permission in AMGA makes it possible to restrict, for example, using a specific patient data to only a few authorized, authorized medical practitioners. Then let me start with questioning why we need metadata replication in the first place. As, as is common in, in, in the LHC experiment these days, in case of thousands of jobs running on a con running concurrently accessing a metadata catalog service, it's not hard to imagine that a single centralized system does not provide adequate service in terms of performance and scalability. Like in the have applications where right weights right rate are an order of magnitude lower, lower than read rates. Write can easily be performed in a central catalog, but reads are more frequent and must be uploaded to read only applicants that are, close, that are close to the users. Partial replication is necessary for situations where remote users are only interested in part of metadata. And this scenario can be implemented by replicating part of the collection hierarchy in AMGA. This ability of AMGA to replicate only the data needed by local users can often result in an order of magnitude, magnitude decrease in the amount of replicated data. AMGA uses a, a, synchro, a synchronous uh, master slave model for replications. This adoption of a synchronous replication is motivated mainly by the assumable high latency of wide radio networks between the AMGA masters and slave servers. In the AMGA master slave model, write operations are only allowed to uh, allowed at the master servers, and the master keeps on its local database, a log of all the updates that it performed on the back end. These logs are then shipped to the slave that repeats the updates to keep themselves up to date. Uh, the idea of federation of catalog rather than the reputation of catalog comes along to address the security concerns of the the biomedical communities, as this metadata often contains confidential information about patients, where the metadata is often generated in different locations, 
like different hospitals or laboratories. Replicating such sensitive metadata concerning patients' medical information, either to either to central catalog or other replicas, would increase the risk of exposure to malicious effects. AMGA addresses this security issue with the support for the federation of individual catalogs into a single virtual catalog, like the pictures on the bottom of the slide, allowing sensitive metadata descri sensitive, sensitive describing patients' information to remain secure in its origin sites, like at each hospital A and hospital B, respectively, while providing transparent access to authorized users regardless of their locations. AMGA features various clients that have access to AMGA catalog service, including a share-like interactive client called, called MD client, a GUI client called AMGA manager, and many programming APIs. This slide has a glimpse of the AMGA MD client to access to AMGA service. As is As you see, the create GIR allows to create a collection. In this slide, you can see one. Uh, you can you can see to create uh, hospital collections, and also you can see uh, sub sub collections under the hospital name uh, patients. At, at once you created the patients. Collections, you can uh, using the add add it add a GTR command. You can define uh, your schema associated with the collections. In this case, this patient's collection has three attributes: name in text type. Name, illness, and age. Name and illness is text type, and age is in integer type. Once you create it, you define um, collections with proper schema. You can insert some entries using add entry command, like 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 you see in this slide. And you could update entries with this update command. And also, you could make a query using this select attribute by giving some conditions. This slide shows an example of AMGA Python, Python, Python API, which you may feel is quite intuitive if you are familiar with Unix file systems. Here, you, you see you create the you can you see hospital collection is created and then two sub collection under hospital called doctor collection and patient collection is created and you make change directory to the to go to, to move to patient patient collections and you can add the attributes like name, illness and age. And then you can make you can add you can insert entries in this way. So you could you could also get a glimpse of AMGA GUI client called AMGA Manager in this slide. You see here the hospital collection. Under the hospital collection there are two sub collections, doctor sub collection and patient sub collection. Here you can see the entries in in patient. Okay? And then here you can see attributes attributes of the patient collections, and also this console panel you can put some some MD client commands here.
Okay, let's move on to some huge cases. As, as, as you've seen in this slide, AMRA has been adopted as a metadata service in many projects and applications, ranging from high energy physics to drug discovery to digital library. Let me introduce some AMGA best practice and use cases in your application. This slide tells the very, the very two early adopters of AMGA given valuable feedback requirements and bug fixing to the early design and implementation stage of AMGA. LHCB is the first head experiment that adopted AMGA as its book Keeping purpose to keep additional job information from executed jobs. Anga, as you know, an easy to an easy to use grid enabled job submission and management client tool also adopted Anga as a persistent repository for storing information about job status of users who submit a job to grid to grid through Anga which helps maintain the history of jobs submitted to the grid. MDM is a very bio biomedical application that gives a strict security requirement to AMBA. MDM allows to share medical images among many stakeholders where data privacy and protection is a primary concern. MDM adopted AMBA to securely manage sensitive metadata associated with medical images by fully exploiting the AMGA's fine-grained access control support features that gives an ability to put in place for entry access, access control permission to each and every patient's medical image. MDM is also the very application that fully harnesses the distributed metadata support feature of AMGA by enabling sens sensitive metadata to be retained at a local site where the real data is created, rather than to be moved and maintained in a central catalog ser service. GMAD, GMAD provides a movie-on-demand service a user can choose one to be streamed in a real time in a real time among a list of movies stored in GMAR server. Metadata information about movies such as title, runtime, director, cast, release data, and release date and plus summary are stored in AMBA. In GMAR, AMBA serves as a repository for the metadata information for each movie, allowing users to make queries based on one or more attributes. Developed by CNRS, Wisdom was a great grid enabled in silico virtual screening system to identify potential drug candidates for neglected or emerging diseases like malaria and avian flu. AMGA was exploited as a task manager that maintains information about each individual docking task, such as task ID, task status, compound name, and target put name, and so on. Docking jobs, once being successfully launched on the grid, con contact the AMGA to retrieve a task along with, task along with target and vegan information and perform some molecular ducting simulations, and then update the task status information back in the AMGA server. Like Wisdom, that virtual screening service is another grid-enabled virtual screening service developed by Academic Sinica Grid Computing Center in Taiwan, currently up and running in full operation. AMGA is used to collectively store result information from ducting simulations and subsequent data analysis is done easily through AMGA queries rather than looking into the results widely distributed on the grid, on the grid storage. This slide shows that AMGA is adopted as a method of service for indexing of various seismic related data in, in a seismic application service developed as part of 
the sea beneath further. Please refer to the reference below for more details of the use of Amga in this project. Langa is also adopted as a method of service for accounting on the images method in climate petitions, as we've seen in this slide. Okay, now let me move on to the Amga use cases in Bell to distributed computing that we are now closely collaborating on as a partner of Dell to distributed working group. The Bell 2 experiment is a particle physics experiment conducted by the Bell Collaboration, which is an international collaboration of more than 400 physicists investigating ship evaluation effects at KK in Tsukuba in Japan. Bell 2 is the second phase of Bell experiment, and with the expected 2 gigabytes per second DAQ rate, it will produce about 200 petabytes of data in about 10 years starting 2015, which is about 50 times more data to be generated compared to the original batch experiments. With this setting, a metadata catalog is essential to help search for specific files among a couple of tens of million files distributed across multiple three sites. Unlike the stage one of their experiments, Bell 2 has adopted a distributed computing model as seen in this, in this slide. Raw data from the detector will be stored at a tape storage in KK and backed up in PNNN in the, in the, in the state. MC production will take place at multiple three sites and the MC data will be stored there. User created data called and pupil will be sold in local sites for physics analysis purpose by scientists. Bell2 computing has adopted Jira for grid-enabled distributed workload management and AMGA for metadata management. GBAS2 is a job submission and management client developed on top of Jira clients. Currently, one AMGA master server is deployed in KK, and three AMGA server, slave servers are deployed in KK, CNNL, and KT for metadata redundancy purpose. This slide shows the bare to distributed computing grid infrastructure consisting of both LCG sites in Europe and OSG sites in the state, along with the deployment of two both DIRA and AMGA servers. This table shows a file level metadata schema defined so far in BEAR 2, which is still evolving. Apart from file related attributes such as LFN, you can see some high energy physics specific attributes such as experiment, experiment, experiment number, run number, and event numbers, and so on. At the moment, in Bell 2, the federation of metadata catalog is not of primary concern. However, considering hundreds of petabytes of data, the size of metadata itself is expected to expected to, to be to be stored in a single central master you know, master catalog. For this, like in this slide. Some proposal has been made to fully exploit the replicated and distributed feature of AMGA to fully distribute and replicate metadata itself by the group of each individual experiment collections, which is now under discussion in the Bell distributed working group. Okay. The performance of AMGA metadata service was evaluated during the first mass MC data sharing this that took place in March for three weeks, where 60 million events were generated. 
and that showed good performance and stability. We have we have got some good valuable feedback in improving the under iPhone API and resulted in some minor problem fixing to lambda. Rather than using the two different APIs in GBAS2, the need for the need for the use of single API has come out uh, during during this uh, first mass MC data challenge. And the and the con and the consolidation of AMGA and GRAG APIs under investigation with a prototype implementation by KK. As mentioned in, in the previous slide, some federated and duplicated metadata catalog scenario are under discussion. Okay, let me conclude my talk with our future plan on AMGA support that you might be interested in what happened to AMGA support after EMI. Even after the end of EMI, AMGA team will continue to provide the base level service support through the EGI GBUS, meaning that we will keep five working days response time regardless of the ticket priority level. As a former EMI product team, we will participate in the media initiative, which is an open, lightweight collaboration on the, on the, on the coordination of distributed middleware technologies launched last April to facilitate the development and evolution of middleware solutions beyond short term project limits. TST will continue to take care of take care of the evolution and maintenance of AMGA with our internal body. And we will continue to work closely with the Bell community to provide AMGA technical and service support that is required from Bell communities. Thanks for listening to my talk.